The Tyrannosaurs are probably the most well-known group of dinosaurs. This is due to a wealth of fossil material compared to other theropod dinosaurs and even other groups of dinosaurs. There is a new Tyrannosaur named every couple of years, but despite a growing number of new critter data for the phylogenic nerds to munch on, the exact evolutionary relationships amongst the latest forms of this most famous of groups has been slippery. Every new critter tends to shake up the Tyrannosaur tree in one way or another. For example, there are now four possible tribes within the Tyrannosaurinae, plus the Albertosaurinae. The Albertosaurinae still seems to hold Gorgosaurus and Albertosaurus, but the Tyrannosaurinae now holds the Allioraminae, Allioramus remotus, Allioramus alti, and Chionchiosaurus. The Teratophoninae, Lythronax, Teratophonius, and Dynamoterror. The Despletosaurinae, Thanatotheristes, Despletosaurus horneri, Despletosaurus wilsoni, and Despletosaurus terosus. And finally, the relatively stable Tyrannosaurinae, Tyrannosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and Zhushang Tyrannus. As of now, the major hypothesis is that early Tyrannosauroids originated in Eurasia and migrated into North America sometime in the Jurassic. From there it gets a little muddy because early Cretaceous rock layers are fickle. Despletosaurus has recently been one of the biggest thorns in the sides of Tyrannosaur researchers. It's now the most speciose genus of Tyrannosaur, with a total of three mostly solidly defined species. The genus dates back to a 1970 description by paleontologist Dale Russell, who used a relatively complete specimen that had been discovered in 1921 as the holotype. This critter was originally thought to be a unique species of the genus Gorgosaurus, but was given the name Despletosaurus terosus. The next species of the critter, Despletosaurus horneri, would be described in 2017 by Thomas Carr and friends based on three relatively complete specimens and four referred bits that were already in museum collections. The third species, Despletosaurus wilsoni, was named in 2022 by Elias Warshaw and Denver Fowler based on a single relatively complete skull and partial skeleton. These new species have opened up discussions and analysis on the evolution of these later tyrannosaurs, giving way to two differing hypotheses. To start, Thomas Carr and colleagues 2017 paper on Despletosaurus horneri and the 2022 Warshaw and Fowler work on Despletosaurus wilsoni hypothesized that the three known species of Despletosaurus represented a direct line of evolution something called anagenesis, wherein one species develops into another and so on. A 2024 paper by Charlie Roger Scherer and Christian Voiculescu Olvad put forth their argument that this step-by-step -step hypothesis was not as well supported as the alternative hypothesis, that all three species of Despletosaurus were offshoots of the Despletosaurus genus, evolving into their own clades, with some even living at the same time as others, something called cladogenesis. To backtrack a little, we need to take a look at Despletosaurus horneri. This animal, specimen Moore 590, was originally described by Jack Horner, David Variccio, and Mark Goodwin in 1992, but they didn't specify it as its own species. Instead, they argued that the specimen was a transitional species between Despletosaurus terosus and Tyrannosaurus rex. This is where the idea that Tyrannosaurus evolved from robust American Tyrannosaurs that was so common in the 90s and aughts came from. Paleontologist Thomas Holtz tested this hypothesis with a phylogenetic analysis in 2001, but unfortunately his results for this evolutionary transition were neither strongly supported nor rejected. A few years later, Philip Curry wrote that he had noticed definite differences among several specimens of Despletosaurus terosus that were found in Canada. Ten years after this, Mark Lowen, Randall Ermis, Joe Sertic, Philip Curry, and Scott Sampson published another huge paper in which they named Lythronax and then did a big analysis of all known Tyrannosaurs at the time to come up with a more comprehensive phylogenetic tree. With this study, they found Despletosaurus was paraphyletic, 
which means that some species or specimens may actually belong outside of the true Despletosaurus group. Their work here in this tree shows that the Despletosaurus genus is more primitive than the rest of the Tyrannosaurine group. They were also finding things that seemed to not make a ton of sense, such as one specimen from the Dinosaur Park formation being evolutionarily more primitive than two other species but stratigraphically between them in time. The problem was that these authors used a specimen that was immature, and that may or may not belong to Gorgosaurus, and immature critters always seem to skew phylogenetic analyses. Stephen Brusati and Thomas Carr then did some work on this analysis in 2016. They found two possible results. One tree has Despletosaurus terosus and Horneri all on their lonesome, with the Tyrannosaurini as the next best thing. The other has the two Despletosaurus species ramping up into the members of the Tyrannosaurini. These results were used in the description of Despletosaurus wilsoni, and they came up with the anagenesis evolutionary line from Terosis to wilsoni to Horneri, the thing that was challenged in the 2024 paper. Thus leading me to the main subject of this video, a brand new paper published by Elias Warshaw, Daniela Barada Guevara, and Denver Fowler as a rebuttal of sorts, in which they conduct a new analysis using more specimens and correcting what they saw as mistakes made in the 2024 Scherer and Voiculescu Olvad paper. This new paper's analysis used specimens of Despletosaurus terosus, Despletosaurus horneri, plus the Despletosaurus wilsoni holotype BDM-107, and a few new specimens. The TMDC Despletosaurus, specimen TMP-2003.010.003, and the Dinosaur Park Despletosaurus, specimen TMP-2001.036.1. When all of the anatomical data was collected, quantified, and placed into some phylogenetic software, the team found that all of them formed an anagenetic line through time with no overlaps right at the base of the Tyrannosaurini tribe. Elias Warshaw states that no autopomorphic traits were found in any of the specimens. These are traits that are only found in one specimen and not another, and might indicate direct speciation away from the other species, as opposed to slow gradual change from one form to another. The paper also lumped the newly analyzed specimens of Despletosaurus into the recent Despletosaurus wilsoni species thanks to some shared traits. This means that all of these specimens are transitional forms within the Despletosaurus wilsoni species between Despletosaurus terosus and Despletosaurus horneri on the way to the Tyrannosaurini. The major difference between what Warshaw and friends found in their paper versus what Scherer and Voiculescu Olvad found is that none of the Despletosaurus specimens overlap exactly in time. Some come from the same region, while others range across Alberta and Montana. Okay, great, why should you care? Well, this may moderately rewrite the evolutionary history of Tyrannosaurus rex. So here's the deal. The youngest Despletosaurus fossils are 74.4 million years old. The Tyrannosaurans pop up no later than 73.5 million years ago with the Asian Zhusheng Tyrannus. However, Despletosaurus are only known from the north of Laramidia, the ancient western subcontinent. Then there's the newly named Tyrannosaurus macraensis popping up in southern Laramidia only a few hundred thousand years after Zhusheng Tyrannus, depending on the exact dates of its rock layers. So younger than 73.2 million years ago. Now, around the time the Tyrannosaurans pop up in Asia and southern North America, the Despletosaurs are completely gone from northern Laramidia. In their stead are the Albertosaurs. Further work is needed to get to the bottom of this, whether there really never were any Tyrannosaurans here with the Albertosaurs. Finally, Tyrannosaurus rex appears around 67 million years ago. The Asian Tyrannosaurans, Tarbosaurus and Zhusheng Tyrannus evolved from Despletosaurus. The question now is whether either Tyrannosaurus macraensis, Tyrannosaurus rex, or both are purely endemic to North America or are descended from a lineage which first went into Asia and then came back to North America. None of this can be proven with this new study, but it does open up the possibilities a bit more than traditionally thought. 
Perhaps more fossil material may show that Tyrannosaurus was never an immigrant to begin with. Exciting times. I want to thank the authors for giving me early access to the paper in order to bring this video to you. Special thanks go to paleontologist Elias Warshaw as he was extremely helpful in answering all of my questions and providing corrections and helpful suggestions for the script. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, like this video, drop a comment in the comment section below, and hit the bell icon to stay in the know with everything Edge. Thanks for watching.